Okay, this video is how to do ear flaps on a hat. And this is the hat I showed on my website, or on my Facebook page, sorry. With the little simple ear flaps, I didn't do any like increasing or decreasing. I just kept it a simple rectangle to make sure that it would cover my daughter's ear. I did try this on after her, you know, after I finished it. And it did seem to cover her ear, so that's why I'm leaving it like this. Um, this only, I worked this whole hat today, so I mean, basically this took... I think it took about two, three hours to make, give or take. It probably would have taken less, but I was a little distracted by my daughter. So this is what we're going to work on how to make. Now, <clears throat> I made this on the red loom. And this loom, I can tell I've used it quite a bit because some of the pegs just want to pull out, which is kind of annoying when they pull out like that. So just be careful if you have a circular loom that you have used a few times that does have removable pegs, they might pop out on you. So what we're going to, the other thing you're going to need is the hook that comes with pretty much any loom knitting kit, a pair of scissors, and I like to use stitch markers, which I use these little rings, whatever you want to use to be able to indicate what's going to be coming up. And then I also have this little mini, little mini row counter that I got from my local dollar store. It's just a very tiny little instrument that you turn it and it will, on each side, so each side rolls, to um, tell you how many rows you're doing. I don't know if you can see that very well. So I use this because I didn't know how far down I had to make the flaps. So it ends up actually being about 12 rows is what you're going to end up doing just for the section of the ear flap. So that's what we're going to do. And of course you need yarn. I'm picking this just because I think it's a vibrant bright color to see. <clears throat> so get your yarn ready. You're going to use two strands if you're using a thinner yarn, or one strand if you're using a bulkier type yarn, which you'll be able to see. You can work a few stitches and be able to tell whether or not you need to actually, you know, double it up or not. <clears throat> okay, so my yarn's a little uncooperative today. Okay, then what you're going to do is you're going to be looking at your room, and if you have, especially if you have a circular loom that has like a peg here, which I kind of call the starting peg, what you're going to do... <clears throat> Okay, is get yourself any kind of marker indicator to show you where you're going to go. What you're going to do, and I want to make sure these are circular, is I started here and I counted one, two, three, four, and on the fifth one, I placed my stitch marker. So again, it's good. looking at this, you're going to go one, two, three, four, five. So on the fifth peg, you're going to put your stitch marker. And of course, you can do the same thing on the other side, which you don't have to do right now. Because we're going to work one ear flap at a time. So for right now, we're just going to work on one side. So we've counted the five, and what I did is actually eight. So you can put a stitch marker in each spot, or what you can do, again, these pegs are kind of, okay, what you can do is count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and drop your next stitch marker. Because you're going to be going across eight pegs. One, two, three, four five, six, seven, eight. And again, so if you're looking at it like this, you got the one, two, three, four, fifth one starts one, and then you go eight pegs to that. That's what it should look like. Okay, and that's all we're going to be working on is this section. This is going to be the first ear flap. So grab yourself your yarn and make your slip knot. And it doesn't really matter which way you place it, just place it on your starting peg there. And all you're going to do is tighten it a little bit if you want. Okay, and then grabbing all the strands, so even the ones from your slip knot top, you're just going to work your way over to this other one. So I do the E-wrap, you can do knit, whichever one works for you. And you're going to do this for 12 rows. So all I'm doing is I'm wrapping it. As you can see, I'm just simply E-wrapping it. Like I said, do a different one if you want. So when I hit this one, I kind of push these down. So when I hit this one, I'm going back through. So what ends up happening is your end pegs at times are only going to have one strand. But what I forgot to do, as you can see, so I have to go back and grab that. So I forgot to grab all of this so it will hide in the hat easier. So again, I'm picking up all of them so that I can hide all the strands in the hat. 
And it doesn't easily, it didn't affect the look of the hat too much for me. Okay, so I'm rewrapping again. And then when I come around this peg, then you go back through the other ones. So you get back to the beginning. And then just knit over. Now, like I said, I did about 12 rows, but I mean, this may change how many you have to do. And the idea of doing them five away from that starting peg may be different on a different size loom. So you may have to kind of practice your hat first. So just to see if they're going to kind of fall in the right spot that you need for your ears. So that was only one row. So when we go back over, we don't wrap this one, we start wrapping the next one. And then again, it over. And there's two rows. So what I'm going to quickly do is get down enough that you can see the flap. Because pretty much once you do each of these flaps, which are separate, you're doing them right on the loom that you're going to be making the hat on. So what happens is you're going to leave them on the loom. And then they'll blend right into the project. So there's two. Now this is a practice hat, so I'm not too worried about being perfect. But like I said, about 12 rows down, give or take, you know, the size of the head you're doing. If someone's got big ears, you know, it seemed to work for 12 for me. So I'm on row number three. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep going down until I hit about 12 rows and then we'll come back and I'll show you the next step. Okay, so I went down probably about the 12 um, rows, but it might be a little off. Now all you're going to do is you're going to end up leaving this ear flap on the loom, but you got to, I cut this off. So just cut yourself leaving a little bit of a tail and just leave it alone. You're done with that side. And what you're going to do is you'll actually pick up this string when we do the whole way around. So what you're going to do is do the same thing where you look at the top of the loom and you count your one, two, three, four, five, and drop the stitch marker so you know that that's the fifth peg. And do a double count, do count again, go going one, two, three, four, five, and I realize it's on the wrong one, so you want to make sure you drop it on the right one. So count, make sure that you're counting from this peg. You count here, go one, two, three, four, five, so you should be able to go one, two, three, four, five. Make sure it's on the fifth peg. And then you're doing eight pegs, so you count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then drop yourself the next stitch marker. Or, or if you're able to remember it, that's fine too. I just I like to have a guideline of you know where I'm working in between. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and drop the peg. <clears throat> and you're gonna do the same technique you did on this side on the other side for 12 rows. So go ahead and do that and then I'll show you the next step. Okay, so I did the other side with the ear flaps and you can kind of see that they should be about the same. If you count how many rows you do for the first ear flaps, just make sure you do that for the second. And then just cut yourself a little tail. Now what you're going to do is start at the beginning of the hat like you would normally do. So make your slip knot again. And pretty much you're going to do the hat just like you would normally do the hat. So that, that way, <coughs> excuse me, and then all you're going to do is grab all your strands and wind them together around. Okay, and since I have actually a little too much strand as the excess, what I'm going to do is actually cut this to make it a little smaller because I don't need that much. <clears throat> and then all you're going to do is go around like you normally would. And when you start hitting, and don't worry about these that fall out, you can fix them later. And once you hit the part where you actually hit the air flap, you're still just going around and wherever you cut off that excess string, like right here, you're going to bring that right into the string that you're working with. So as you can see on the inside, when I hit here, I'm going to grab this one to bring it around too. So that way it picks up that extra strand. And then work your way around until you get to the next batch of where your ear flap is. So you're working your way around, <clears throat> excuse me, you get about here and then you realize that you have that excess string from when you cut it before. So just grab that all together and go around your pegs until you get back to the beginning. And what's this going to do when you get back to the beginning? All you're going to do is knit over where there's two strands. So basically where the ear flaps are is where you're going to knit over. Because that's the only spot that should have the two strands, or the two 
rows. And what this is going to do is link your ear flap into the hat. And put it seamlessly too. Like I said, you can't really see to me where it is. So that's all I'm doing is the only ones that need it are the ones where the ear flap is. And if you look, you don't have to do any there, and you go over to here and you do this section too. And like I said, don't worry about the strands that didn't want to hide. You can fix them later. You can even trim them off. And now you're just going to work the hat like you would normally work a hat. Which means since you're done with the ear flaps part, if you use um, these things that are removable, you can just pull them off so that they're not in, in your way anymore because you don't need them anymore since the ear flaps are done. And that's all you're going to do. Now you just push down the ear flaps and then you're just going to work yourself around as if it's a normal hat because now your ear flaps, if you look on the inside, are attached and already are going to be in your project. So again, all you're going to do is just go right around and this is where you can do different stitches if you want to do the purl stitch, if you want to do knit stitch, if you want to do a pattern of a knit pearl row. It's all up to you how you want to make the hat. As you can tell in this hat, I did do some knitting and pearl rows right about here just to give a little different look to it. But that's all I'm going to do now is you're just simply going to wrap around or knit around whatever you decide to use. <clears throat> and like I said, your ear flaps will be attached to the hat. So that's all I'm doing is e-wrapping it around. checking on my yarn too. So that's all you're going to do. Now all the rows are ready to be knitted over and your ear flaps will be attached to your hat. So just keep doing the hat for as long as you need to do it for whatever size head you're doing and then take it off. Um, I usually just do the um, basic bind off for a hat. So that's all it is to adding ear flaps. One quick thing, yes I did these as a simple rectangle but there are different ways you can do it to to give it a more rounded edge. If you want to what you can do is just kind of, when you've got your section, you can kind of start maybe in the middle and just kind of wrap those back and forth and slowly work your way out and that might help create a different curve into the ear flap. I just wanted to keep it really simple because I figured people first learning how to do it, it's better to keep it simple. And I actually like the rectangle for me because then I know it totally will cover my daughter's ear. So I just wanted to let you know that there are variations on the ear flap, um, how you might want to look. Don't be afraid to do a knit pro combination even when you're doing the um, ear flap. So just have fun with it, and I just wanted to add that little bit.